it's very chilling, you know, the callousness that some parts of humanity have towards, you know, the buffalo. We're not quitting, definitely, because we just uh, can't allow this to happen anymore. of deity on the landscape. They're gentle giants. They're teachers. Spending time with the buffalo is very healing. Buffalo are extremely important to many plant and animal species and to the, the land itself. They are the land and the land is them. You cannot separate the two. Wild bison are ecologically extinct. This is the last continuously wild population of American buffalo left in this country. Pretty much as soon as I learned about that, Montana started killing them in large numbers. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Nine hazers with the two Forest Service LEOs on horseback who were also basically hazing. Hazing is a tool that state and federal agencies that basically are doing the work of the interests of the livestock industry in Montana use to remove buffalo from the habitat that they choose to be on. Hazing is not a nice word. They run these buffalo for miles and miles and miles relentlessly. It's completely abusive. Creek break. Outbound 191, Mark Point, Cover Creek. Over. First Amendment rights. We have a right to monitor and document government activity on public lands and with public wildlife. Bison are part of the public trust. They belong to all Americans. Montana does not allow wild buffalo in their in our state. And this is what they treat them like. So these horses with Department of Livestock agents on top will run these buffalo down this highway. And if you can see the tree line is almost at the park border down here and they'll run them back into Yellowstone National Park. They chase them through fields, they chase them through rivers, they chase them through forests. They're bullies, these guys. They haze them into these capture facilities, which are just glorified cattle corrals. They get tested for this cattle disease, brucellosis, which cattle brought to this country. They're loaded on to livestock trucks. Wild animals jammed into this metal coffin with all these other buffalo. Their injuries occur, they're afraid, they're hurting each other, they don't know what's happening. And then we don't get to see what happens after that because most of the slaughterhouses are on private land and they don't allow us in. Come on, give that baby a break, man. So we're right now in the heart of bison calving season. 
they have no mercy for the little calves. Families are torn apart, mothers are separated from their children. Looks like some calves might be starting to collapse. One of our patrols called us out to, to Edwards Peninsula where all this chaotic hazing had been taking place and they had found an orphaned calf all by itself and we wanted to help it. We came home and organized a calf patrol and a few people went and attempted but she was so scared and she was so fast that we decided to back off. And as soon as we turned around, we saw coming down two adult females. Those two mamas came down that mountain and went, made a direct beeline into those woods where that baby had last been seen. And we knew something good was gonna happen. We waited and waited and it took a while. It took hours. And they walked back through the woods and Pat says, looks like they have a baby. And they had found that calf. And when they had that calf, they took their time, they let it rest. And they got to a certain place where they were almost out of sight and we wanted to see where they were going. And discovered that both of those mamas were pregnant. This wasn't even their baby. They came for him anyway. Yeah.